My name is Warner and you're tuned in to the BerryBot TV channel. As you can see from my intro, I've made some huge progress on the Epic Wire EDM build. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through some of my processes to get to this point. Let's open up Fusion 360 and I'll show you how I got here. Here we are in Fusion and just kind of wanted to give you my plan of attack for making some of these parts. Uh, having the base already made, I figured I would go ahead and make these aluminum columns out of 6061. I was able to get these very accurately um, made to length. So having the precision machined pads uh, done in the router really helped out. Once these got machined, I went ahead and made the end caps for the XY stage. Along with these two plates. And the bearings, uh, the bearing holders, I got with uh, the ball screws. I ended up going through six pairs of ball screws to get two of them I felt really happy with, unfortunately. But um, I have a spacer block that I precisionly machined to the right height uh, that was mounted underneath this uh, holder. Once I got the XY stage in place, I went ahead and started producing parts for the C arc, starting off with this main plate here. And I just started building out uh, each individual part until it was all put together. I really enjoyed making all the parts for this. Uh, believe it or not, there's over 80 uh, custom fabricated parts. Many of them were CNC programmed. And for those of you that aren't using Fusion, uh, you really need to start uh, playing around with it because it is such a valuable and powerful tool. I am finding I'm really, really liking it a lot. Spending my career in SolidWorks, uh, I was really skeptical about going into Fusion, but now that I've made the jump, which I actually did about four years ago, I've really been happy with it. And it's just getting better and better all the time. Hey, one pro tip for you guys, um, new or old, is let's say, for example, we're going to go ahead and jump into machining uh, this end cap right here. One pretty cool tool in Fusion that I use frequently is to double click on a part, right click it, and just hit copy. What that does is it puts the part into your um, on your clipboard so that what you can do is you can just open a new blank part, right click, and then paste new. What this will do is this will actually bring your part in to a whole new file so that you can go ahead and start manipulating just the individual part. This becomes really valuable when you get into really complex uh, assemblies that have you know, hundreds or thousands of parts working in the assembly is not so convenient as it is when you have individual, uh, part files. So that's one thing that I still really enjoy. And, uh, that's one of my pro tips for, uh, getting your part easily, getting your part in or out of your assembly file into a new part file. And speaking of that end cap, I wanted to just go over briefly, uh, for some of you new, Fusion 360 users that are looking into Fusion for cam. This was the cam setup that I had uh, for this end cap. So you can see here's my origin for the workpiece. And these are some of the processes that I programmed in to start uh, manufacturing this thing in the CNC. So here's a simple facing went in just to remove a bunch of the material with a half inch drill bit, went in with an uh, adaptive, 2D adaptive to clear out that material, went further down beyond this pocket. Here's a contour around the outside. And here's to get the bore. I dialed this in to get the bore perfect. Here's the bore for the pocket. 
Here's just drilling some holes and chamfering the whole top edge along with chamfering, chamfering this little inner corner. Doing those hole corners and boring all those holes. In another op, I went ahead and I did the other side. I just flipped it over, faced that. What I did is I, I did a contour to just get the last little bit that I was holding on to, but I allowed myself enough so that the chamfer would go ahead and clean up the little tiny lip that was left with this 2D contour. So what it did is it gave me a really nice finished part went ahead and just cleaned up those chamfered, uh, those corners. And then the next operation was just to go to do these counter bores and holes. Another chamfer. And then the final operation was, believe it or not, just for these, to bore these holes here and... And then I did go ahead and chamfer these two corners here and here. So I ended up with chamfers on everything. But yeah, Fusion 360, very, very valuable tool. I did end up going ahead and changing out, which I'll show you in some photographs. Uh, I had to order some new belt, timing belt these pulleys so I went ahead and made it a two to one ratio so I just got a little bit finer resolution on my clear path motors here I'm getting started on one of the end caps for the XY stage I'm utilizing the Tormach Superfly which is an awesome tool for facing here I'm using a half inch twist drill bit to get some of the material out of these bores And this is the end of the second op. Here again, using the Superfly, this is one of the plates, one of the two plates that uh, connect the X and the Y stages together. I did end up making a fixture plate uh, to finish these off, which worked really well. Here I'm using a quarter inch Lakeshore carbide end mill, which makes really quick work of uh, eating this aluminum. Once I finished the end caps and those center plates, I couldn't wait to get it together to see how it felt. And I was really, really happy with the, uh, the end result. Here is just rinse and repeat to make a whole bunch more parts. It's really nice having a chop saw, horizontal bandsaw, and manual milling machine to go ahead and get some of my blanks prepared for CNC machining. This part here is a mount for my Acme thread nut uh, for the Z-axis. This is kind of a unique part. It's a shaft uh, that has works almost like a cam. If you notice the shoulder bolt there that's holding the pinch roller if, is offset from the center line of this uh, main shaft. And that's what makes it work like a cam. And this is the housing for that shaft. 
Also had to do a little machining on the enclosure for the C-Art controller. And uh, some more machining on the ends of the ball screws. Although it's not visible here, I put two of these flats on at 90 degrees apart for the set screws on the pulleys. The parts you see here are the flush cup mounts and by far were some of the more challenging parts to make. I made these out of 303 stainless to try to put as much in my favor as possible. Uh, there's actually five features here that have threads in them. And I thread milled the big thread that you see there. That's a uh, 30 millimeter thread. And thread milling it really turned out great. The plastic cups thread on there very nicely. Just about every side of this had a feature that needed to be milled. And I did do the whole th process in the milling machine. Here you can see those parts installed on the Sea Arc. The blue supply line you see there is a rigid uh, polyurethane tube capable of 200 PSI. They really turned out nice. One of my tricks for making these end caps, machining these end caps rather, is that all the operations are exactly identical on all four of the plates. This just helps eliminate uh, any difference that I might have built into my machine and made these precision linear rods line up absolutely perfectly. I was really happy with the result. Originally, I, I had planned on making my own bearing block mount, but after I received these, uh, they were in such good shape that I had another idea, and that was to just fabricate a block that was precisionly made in the height uh, where I wanted it. Utilizing these uh, Starrett parallel parallels really made it easy to get it dialed in perfectly. Hey guys, I'm going to attempt to uh, explain my procedure for aligning this ball screw. The very first thing I did is I went ahead and, oh, by the way, when I machined the screws, the mounting screws for this end plate, they're very close tolerance. I'm talking like maybe five thousandths. So this, uh, the location of this mount for the ball screw was pretty much the datum for the, for the entire thing. Uh, to find out the thickness of this uh, spacer plate, what I did is I went ahead and centered the bearing mounts on both ends as close to dead center as possible, just measuring them with a caliper. And then I just snugged up the, the screws here, ran the stage to the middle, and used my adjustable stair at parallel to find out what this distance was needed to be for this spacer. Once I did that, I went ahead and I securely mounted the spacer and the ball screw nut mount in place. Then what I did is I loosened up the screws on these two end caps. I ran the stage all the way to the extreme, as close as I could get it to the, to the uh, uh, ball screw nut, and then I snugged up the screws a little bit, ran it the other direction, and did the same thing down on this end. Once I had done that a few times, I went ahead and tightened them up for good, and it really turned out great. It's got a real nice uh, motion, and it's uh, very, very smooth the whole travel. So that might just give you some ideas on how you can do it. This is the bearing pocket I oversized by about 20, 25 thousandths so that this whole bearing mount could float a little bit. The screw holes for this thing are slightly oversized, so it did allow for uh, adjusting it and getting it perfectly aligned. Fabricating these gears uh, assemblies here required some special attention. I machined these rings here out of 01 tool steel and then heat treated them to a Rockwell hardness of about C60. I did go ahead and temper it back. It was, it ended up being somewhere between uh, 55 and 60, but fairly hard. So the durability of them should be really good. Like everything, there's a trick 
to doing these rings. I'm just about ready to pull them out of the oven here. And uh, it's really important that they lay flat. And basically they enter the oil laying flat. Uh, that'll help prevent warping and make them as uniform as possible. I did wish I had left just a hair more material because it came out exactly perfect when I cylindrically ground these on my surface grinder, but I could have could have had a little bit more material there. I cut it pretty close, but they worked out good. Just want to give a shout out to my boy Stan over at Barzy Industrial. This is his Hot Shot 360. Uh, the, it's a fairly new tool for me, and I've really enjoyed using it. It's working out really great. Here are the rings just after I pulled them out of the oil. About 95% of the, uh, the, the gunk came right off with a little Scotch-Brite. If you don't have one of these hardness testers, boy, it's a really great way to get a good idea of how hard you're uh, getting your parts. In this image, you can see I ended up with about five thousandths of an inch uh, oversized from my dimension on the drawing, where really I could have uh, had that be about five, ten thousandths would have been good. Wanting the very best I could do as far as concentricity con is concerned with this gear assembly, I decided to custom machine a 5C collet. Also for the reason that I could use this in my Herrig uh, spin, spin fixture in my surface grinder uh, to do the finish machining on or finish grinding on that ring. This is the setup I used on my surface grinder uh, to get these rings ground in. One of my favorite tools is my Fordham TX motor and handpiece. Quite often, um, these sit in my electronics lab, uh, but I do bring them out and mount them to the tool post on the lathe to do some really awesome grinding on phenolics. And I use a cutoff wheel as well. You can see my setup here. I have it um, an Allen key in my tailstock uh, chuck, so I can just put a 10,000th shim and push the stock over to get it cut to size. You can see I've also got my vacuum mounted, uh, utilizing one of these really nice adjustable arms that are super cheap on Amazon. Uh, they use them in photography. And unlike the no-go ones, they uh, are really inexpensive and they, they have a locking mechanism uh, that keeps them from sliding around even with uh, uh, pretty good sized loads on them. Uh, so if you haven't, if you don't have any of these in your tool or arsenal, I really highly recommend them. This is just an image of those isolation washers out of phenolic that I machined out on the router. But one thing I wanted to mention is this tool here. It's an Amana tool and I buy it from tools today. This thing is freaking awesome for doing phenolic or circuit board for that matter. It's a little pricey, but it seems to have a really good life. Now, I know there's China versions of this thing uh, that I have not tried that I think would probably be worth trying. I don't think you'll get the same life out of it, but um, it just works really awesome. One of my favorite things to do is to take my old single flute uh, carbide tooling end mills and turn them into uh, miniature boring bars. In order to get as much precision on these bores as possible, I did run a reamer through it for final sizing. I went ahead and scuffed up the bonding areas of these gears really well so that the T88 epoxy would uh, bond the, these phenolic parts I made um, to the gear. I would normally throw this in the sandblaster, but I didn't want to get it all over my uh, gear teeth. I made two of these drive gears uh, from one Masumi gear that I ordered. I just chopped it up to get a couple of small pieces. And then I used this uh, super high strength um, retaining compound 
uh, to adhere them. They were extremely close tolerance, only about a half a thousandth. Not press fit, but they were tight. I used this medium strength Loctite to adhere the shafts for the small gears onto the servo motors rather than trying to do it with set screws. I've showed this tool before. This is my Mayhew uh, punch set. And I had to whip this out to create a whole bunch of uh, little thrust washers. Any place where there was metal to metal, I utilized this material that I get from McMaster Car. I've got a whole bunch of it in varying thicknesses, which really makes it handy. And uh, any place that there was metal to metal and I needed a thrust washer, uh, this material works really excellent. One other thing I wanted to point out is the Mayhew's got increments of a sixteenth of an inch and quite often working with metric it may not be just perfect but that's where these little tools uh, that you use for RC car racing um, to make your bodies uh, and open up holes in uh, polycarbonate work excellent for opening up holes in uh, you know punched washers. The white spacers you see here uh, making up the difference between the shoulder bolt and my uh, gear assembly was made up of uh, Teflon. And uh, one trick to get the exact dimension, or very close to the exact dimension, I, is I used a Sterrett thickness gauge. It's a number 270, which, which came in really handy. It can get you very close to the exact uh, thickness of these spacers. The two next milestones I'm looking forward to getting completed are the electrical uh, control panel and everything that goes along with it, as well as the plumbing. And uh, I've already had a chance to play around with the software. I've got my um, little Intel uh, mini computer loaded with the software and uh, already played around a lot with the um, CR controller and whatnot. And I got to I got to give big kudos to Mike, a uh, super, super talented guy. I had no idea how much value I was going to get um, from the things I've purchased from him and uh, just really super impressed. So I'm really excited to get that stuff going and share it with you guys. Please do me a favor and give me a like, uh, subscribe if this is something you're interested in uh, for future videos. And I hope all of you guys are staying safe. Thanks for watching.